This is Olderman versus Trump, and I'm not Trump. The president is sundowning. It's a tough thing to say about someone who has long since stopped being rational, but insanity has degrees. And as the election nears, it is clear that whatever is left of Trump's mind is fracturing before our eyes. You know that he told his fascist rally in Utah that in California they make you wear a COVID mask that you cannot remove. You have to eat through it. No, that would be the story and plot of the man in the iron mask. You know that he had the White House Science Office issue a press release citing as his top accomplishment of his presidency, quote, ending the COVID-19 pandemic, even though it is today as bad as any time this year and getting very much worse very fast. Also, it kind of complicates things if he were to announce a phony vaccine next Monday. What do you need a vaccine for if he already ended the pandemic? These are things insane people say and do. But it's worse than that because it's not only stupid or silly or darkly comical things that are coming out of his diseased mind. In a paroxysm of rage in Tampa Thursday afternoon, Trump warned, quote, bad things are going to happen to Miles Taylor, the newly self-revealed anonymous. And more ominously, he has spoken of Joe Biden getting shot three weeks into Biden's theoretical presidency. It is the kind of cold, sick, murderous, insane statement, and yet still caveated that his supplicants and enablers can deny. Because he had vaguely referenced the 25th Amendment before he said, quote, three weeks in, Joe's shot, Kamala, are you ready? They can claim he only meant shot as in spent. Just as they claimed four years ago that when he talked about what would happen to Hillary Clinton without her Secret Service protection, he didn't mean he wanted somebody to try to shoot her. Of course he did. Both times. The caveats, the vagueness, the loose ends, those are his only real skills. He says something that could result in violence or death or terrorism, but carefully and intentionally leaves himself an escape hatch if it really does. The message, with or without disclaimers, is clear. Three weeks in Joe's shot means his last argument against Biden, or his last revenge wish against Biden, or both, is that he wants somebody to assassinate him. Just as four years ago, speaking of Clinton's protection, quote, take their guns away, she doesn't want guns, take them, let's see what happens to her, meant he wanted somebody to assassinate her. This should startle us. This should lead us to evaluate what we heard based on the standard that Trump's own campaign has applied to such things when it seriously complained that when there was an inch square sign reading 8645 on the Michigan governor's desk during a TV interview that by using the term 86, the governor was, quote, encouraging assassination attempts against President Trump just weeks after someone sent a rice and laced package to the White House, even though that is not what 86 means. And if we're going to play by new rules that say it means encouraging assassination, then what Trump said about Biden was the equivalent of handing out automatic weapons to everybody who heard him say it. This should and would, for any of the previous 44 presidencies, have resulted in the instantaneous removal from office of the insane executive by his own cabinet, by his own party, by his own doctors. That doesn't happen. And we don't all stop and walk off our jobs and refuse to pay our taxes and march in the streets until it does and he is removed. And we don't do that for a variety of reasons. Instead, we always just ask the same question, what the F is wrong with this guy? Before the musings about somebody shooting Joe Biden, the deft little bit of stochastic terrorism with that nice asterisk of deniability, Trump speculated about his completed inspiration of real-life terrorism. He got up and had the gall to wonder if the right-wing terror plot to kidnap the governor of Michigan actually wasn't real. It might have been some sort of sympathy ploy or publicity stunt or who knows what he was thinking. The right-wing terror plot that Trump inspired and for which he should be charged, and for which however painful it will be for Mitt Romney to hear this again, means, sorry Mitt, Donald Trump is by legal definition a terrorist, a stochastic terrorist. But instead of a general strike, we just sit here and all ask that same question again, what the F is wrong with this guy? And even when Trump's diseased brain puts out these sadistic fantasies of assassination and kidnapping and execution and bloodshed, he can still find new things with which to astound us. In what kind of commonplace stupidity of projection would it be that would never occur to him to avoid because it emphasizes his own record as a cheat and a fraud? Trump, who got into college because somebody else took his exams for him, then questioned again for the second consecutive day whether Representative Ocasio-Cortez went to college. In fact, she graduated from Boston University. 
Trump went to the New York Military Academy, a top local choice for the parents of usually violent or otherwise troubled kids, parents who could convince the authorities not to send the troubled child to a juvenile detention camp. Trump then went on to Fordham University and then on to the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania. For a very long time, he included in his resume that he had graduated top of his class at Wharton. Then the school revealed he hadn't even made the honor roll, and he stopped saying that. Meanwhile, Ocasio-Cortez graduated magna cum laude. And then, of course, there was this. This is not Photoshop. This is from Trump's rally in Lansing, Michigan. Remind you of anything? This couldn't be more evocative of Big Brother from George Orwell's 1984 unless they played the national anthem from Oceania. Somebody thought this was a good idea. Guess who? And then when we all wonder why the hell he would bring up his own fraudulent education or make himself look like Big Brother, again we ask, what the F is wrong with this guy? I wish that question was easily answered. I wish it was as simple as saying he was born impaired in some clinical way that makes it impossible for him to actually connect with other humans so that every relationship he has is based on a bribe or a contract or a threat or a non-disclosure agreement. I wish the answer was just that he acts exactly as an alien from another planet would if he landed here and could only see the kinds of things that bind humans together. And unable to understand feelings, the alien from the other planet believed everybody who liked somebody else was being paid to do so. Just like Trump acts. I wish the answer to what the F is wrong with this guy was just drug use or dementia or traumatic brain injury. I wish it was just horrific parenting or never having been disciplined. I wish it was just mini strokes or a messiah complex or congenital lying. I wish he was just a sadist obsessed with fantasies of violence and murder and revenge. I wish it was just that he's a psychopath or that he's just never been loved. Or I wish that it wasn't absolutely every one of the problems I've just mentioned in one vast tinder box of crazy into which somebody threw that one last missing piece, the lighted match that is success on television. I wish that was what the F was wrong with this guy. But of course, there's still one thing more. Ultimately, the failure is not about him. It's what's wrong with this guy. Simply, the Republican Party lets him be like this. The failure is not in the disease or his injury or his substance abuse. It's in the leaders around him. It is in the Republicans. The Republican Party has only one platform plank now, this piece of shit Trump. Those of us opposing him have a thousand goals. Equality, justice, climate change, restoration of the democracy, survival of the human race in its fight against COVID-19. Trump and his Republican cult have only one goal, this piece of shit Trump. We are fighting for, cornball as it sounds, truth, justice, and the American way. Trump and his Republican cult fight for only one thing, this piece of shit Trump. We are navigating the labyrinth to get every American a vote, to give every citizen a voice, to provide every group its rights. Trump and his Republican cult fight for the rights of only one, this piece of shit Trump. We see democracy at stake. Trump and his Republican cult see the holes in democracy that permit fascism and permit this piece of shit Trump. What the F is wrong with him? Honestly, not as much as is wrong with the Republicans who permit him to blight the horizons of mankind, the ones who don't abuse drugs or suffer from dementia or traumatic brain injury or horrific parenting or mini strokes or messiah complexes or congenital lying or sadistic fantasies of violence or psychopathy. They have chosen this path for five years. They awake each morning capable of extricating themselves from this subhuman slime. They may actually pray to whatever their concept of universal purpose might be and somehow skip that part in their religion that says allegiance to the devil actually will send you to hell. They may do all this and yet they act on only one goal, preserving this piece of shit Trump. And they will atone. All right, let's do the headlines. Do them briefly. First off, thank you to everybody who asked about my COVID-19 test. Thumbs up, it's thumbs down. I'm fine. I just had a little an accident during physical therapy yesterday. Hey, you know the $300 million waste of COVID stimulus funds I did a story about last week? The ad campaign that was supposed to star Dennis Quaid, and it was supposed to be encouraging people about COVID-19 and how it was going away and how Trump did a great job on it? 
Then it turned out that the Trump flunky who was behind this, $300 million, some reports said $330 million, that guy had brain cancer, and he went on Facebook Live and said that he was uh, seeing things and believed he was about to be murdered, and his mental health was all gone. Somehow, the story got worse. It turns out, says Politico.com, that the original campaign idea was not, you know, Trump did well. In the, uh, the original idea was a bunch of ads starring Dennis Quaid and some other people that carried this message. Helping the president will help the country. Number two, two endorsements for Trump in the last 48 hours. Jack Nicklaus, the golfer, and Jay Cutler, the very bad football quarterback, endorsed Trump. It turns out there is a Trump budget proposal still pending that would funnel $20 million to a pet project of Jack Nicklaus, and that explains that endorsement. I have known Jack Nicklaus since 1983, and I've known lots of people who know him far better than I do, and that is him in a nutshell, a humorless and solely transactional guy if there is nothing in it for him there's nothing in it. Possibly the least liked of the great athletes that I have ever encountered. Meanwhile, as one Twitter wag noted, Jay Cutler, the quarterback from the Chicago Bears mostly, has long been known for having only one skill, connecting with the wrong team. And lastly, the Trump campaign website was defaced and we are working with law enforcement authorities to investigate the source of the attack, says the campaign's chief liar, Tim Murtaugh. I'd like to add that they knew that they had been hacked because suddenly the Trump campaign site was filled with anti-hate messages. Good night and good luck.